ordered what? Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Dean Callan Show. Um, this, in my mind, is the most hotly anticipated Dean Callan Show ever. It's, I know it's only episode three of the Dean Callan Show and everything else was cabin fever, but um, my guests today, um, I should say my guests today make it feel like uh, a very legitimate show. Um, on, uh, in saying that, um, I haven't, my mind has just lost all the questions I had planned and all the questions I briefed. Um, but you know what? Uh, the idea of the show is uh, legend walks into bar with other legend. I know them. They say hi. Um, I start asking them about their product. And, you know, like any other bar situation where the guys are doing a call saying hello to people who stock their products. So as you can see, massive fan of Plantation and everything that Alexander Gabriel does. So without further ado, um, I thought I'd introduce you guys to, to the first ever live guest in real like Right. We're keeping our meter distance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can see where is this camera angle there? Check that out. So two people in the cabin. Um, I've got the air con on for that reason, just in case it gets too hot in here with all the lights and everything. Um, and and, and here, is, here is my attempt at a three-way uh, camera angle um, so I can bring Alexander in. Alexander. Oh. Hi, guys. <laughs> Cheers. We got it? Are we in? Yeah, to no? be here. Boom. How's that? All right. Okay. Happy okay. days. So I'm actually very excited to have you on the show. Um, and you're coming to us from Cognac, is that right? Absolutely. Uh, this is where I got, you know, uh, with COVID, you know, I had to pick, you know, Barbados, Jamaica, or Cognac. And I, <laughs> you know, I'm in Cognac and I've been in Cognac for like three or four months. Okay, cool. Um, so so how, is, how is lockdown in, in your house? You, I, I'm, from what I understand, you've got plenty of space. Well, we're in the middle of the vineyards, you know, and I got to mm -hmm. tell you one thing. When I saw the COVID starting to hit kind of everywhere around the Royal, my kids were in the States, in the U.S. Ooh. I said, you guys got to come back here. And they, they rushed back in just before lockdown in Konya. Wow, that's a good and, move. Uh, you know, if uh, I have three kids, the youngest, she's 19, Annabelle. If a child could divorce their parents, she would have had after two months of lockdown in Konya. Imagine you're 19 years old. She's studying in the U.S. and you're locked with your older parents in the mm. middle of the vineyards. And, yeah. you know, here we are, you know, we're 10 vineyards and, 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 you know, we distill, you know, we distill the gin and we did all of that. So this is where I am right now. This is what we're doing. We're making a, and we went from the point where there was no leaves on the grapes to the yeah. points that there are little fruits that are going to yeah, be harvested in one month. I've got a grapevine in my garden. I don't know what type of grape it is. And, uh, traditionally, as, as is my, my, I call it bin B, right? Um, most of the grapes actually get eaten by squirrels, but this year there's less squirrels um, and they haven't been eating the raspberries. So that I have to pick the raspberries all the time or, or I'll get fruit flies. This is, this is, the, this is the terror of, of uh, bad gardening on my behalf. Um, but <laughs> now the, grape by, the grapes are coming out. It looks like it's going to be a banging year for like bumper harvest, isn't bumper it? harvest. And, and they're dark grapes, but I know nothing else about them. This, That's this, all I know. This is devastating for me because normally I'm spending a lot of time where Alexander is now. And, and there is no better time, no better place in the world than July in Cognac. Yeah. Because, of course, like uh, most of the year, you've just got sort of wooden sticks coming out the ground. But yeah. in July, you, it's, it's, a it's alive. It's yeah. blooms and, and you can sense the excitement in the air. Actually, you know, one question. So my grapevines, like I'm growing them in London, right? So I'm assuming they're not growing like the, the, the best uh, you, I, you could ever imagine. It's not the perfect situation for them. But I constantly have to cut them back. So is there someone pruning the vines during the growth period all the time? Well, basically, not, not during, you know, once you get closer to harvest, obviously you stop pruning. But, you know, the vine is... Uh, Vine is what grows along trees, right? Yeah. And they, the more you, cr you, you cut and you prune, the more fruit they produce. Exactly, yeah. Okay. That's why you do the pruning to keep it like real short so they produce more of the fruits. So that's why you prune, you know, in the cold month. But you do pruning in the cold month and then you rip the fruits in the warm month. I can testify to that because our team in January, in a, in a cold frost, were out at 10 o'clock in the morning pruning the vines. And... Uh, it was one of the most educational things I've ever done, but also one of the coldest experiences. Of my okay, life. see here, 
guys don't have it. All yeah, yet. mine's a weird. Mine, mine must be growing weird. Yeah. yeah no, uh, well, if you, you prune it in the cold month and you keep it short and then, you know, and so on, then you'll rip nice fruits in the warm months. And I'll send you well, little copper pot stills and you can make your own brandy. Oh, I've, I've got a couple. I've, I've got I've got like four stills. They're hidden oh, out cool. the side. Then you're ready to go. You're yeah, ready, ready to, to go. go. I'll send you uh, some right good yeast or you can use the local yeast, you know. I don't know how's the wild yeast in London. Um, well, to be honest, our, we, we, we do a regular sourdough bread. So... It might be okay in in our little microclimate. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. No, baker's we'll yeast can work. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Peckham Ter So speaking of terroir, right? The number one question I had for you—you you probably know what the burning question already is, right? Uh, so we're drinking uh, Plantation Fiji right now. I love Fiji. Yeah. Right. So first of all, this is delicious. So thank you for bringing this into the world. Thank you. Um, thank you. And secondly, so everyone is talking about it. Um, Plantation, the name, um, you're, you're, ch you're, you're changing the name, which I think, I, I, you know, I have to say, knowing how big a uh, deal it is working with a brand, having the name embodied in every single thing that you do, it's not going to be an easy task, right? So it must have been a big decision for you guys. Um, but do you have any idea what the, the name is going to be? Because terroir was on the top of my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it's, it's a good name. I love Tewa. I'm born, you know, and raised in Burgundy, so I totally relate. You know, it's, it's a work in process, to tell you the truth. Right now, we have no name. We're going to do it step by step, and uh, we're growing, you know, and we, we, we decided to evolve the name as a sign of respect. So this is, but right now, I couldn't uh, tell you more. We're just in the middle okay. of the process. And as you know, marketing is not my forte. If you ask me to dream up a new distillate right now, I'd feel much more comfortable. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a, that that it's a very different world, isn't it? Trying to uh, come out with that in trademark it in yeah. so many. Oh, you could you trademark terroir? You probably couldn't. No, no, you can't trademark terroir. You'd have the whole uh, you'd have the whole French oh. government after you. God. Um, yeah, it's such a difficult thing. And like, does. Look, what, what, so, so what does plantation actually, what does it mean in French? Is it the same thing as, as it is? Yeah, in French, we say plantation. Now, when we chose it, actually, we referred, you know, you go to the Caribbeans, and the Caribbeans, I grew up on the farm, mm -hmm. and I was born on a farm. Yeah, because my mind you know, says farm. Plant, planting things, so, you know, uh, I referred to that, to the nowadays plantation when I did it. And then, you know, with what's going on, and I think it's a great moment of reckoning, and you know, we're about respect and pleasure, right? Sharing good moments together. So that's why we decided to evolve the name. That was a big decision for us, but oh. we're doing this out of respect. Do you know what happened to that little hip flask? No, but I'll tell okay. you while you're, while you're... So speaking about amazing moments, right? You probably don't know this, but um, I got married just over three years ago, and I got married in a beautiful uh, villa in Tuscany, in Italy. And... Wow. Um, a lot of bartenders were at my wedding. And um, even, you know, Declan McGurk, the manager of the American bar at the Savoy Hotel? Yes. Well, he was my celebrant. So my wife walked up the aisle. She gets to the top of the aisle. And uh, uh, Declan McGurk, you know, does the speeches. And we say yes and, and this and back and forth. And then we're a married couple, right? So the moment we're a married couple. And I don't, I, I, honestly, for the life of me, I can't find where it is. But I promise you it does exist. Um, a, a guy called Stuart Hudson gave myself and my wife a wedding gift, which was a German wedding cup. Have you ever heard of a German wedding cup? No, actually, okay. you're going to teach me. It's a beautiful thing, right? <laughs> so, so basically, I don't have it with me, but this is the way it works. So you have a large glass. You have a large metal piece like this, right? And it's beautifully, ornately de decorated, and it, this forms the bottom of the dress of the lady. Okay. And it's a metal lady with a big ballroom dress. And then okay. her torso is here and I plan to show it to you, but we, we've put it in a safe place and I genuinely can't find it. Um, so there's the dress. You've got the torso here, her head would be here and two little arms come up like this. And the two little arms are holding what looks like a basket. Okay. Right? Now the basket is on a swivel. Ah. So when you pick this glass up, this stays like that, and it stays upright, the small glass. Okay. And, and the, the dress forms a large goblet. Now, the idea is you're supposed to drink wine from this, 
and the, the husband drinks the big glass and the little glass stays upright and the wife has the little glass. Ah. Now, on my wedding day, I had eight groomsmen and each of those groomsmen were drinking, had a, a little silver uh, hip flask. I gave it to uh, Paul earlier on. It is somewhere here. Um, but in the panic uh, uh, of getting ready, I forgot all about this. Now, in that hip flask was uh, your, you know, cognac, Abel? Oh, of course I know yeah, Abel. I make so Abel. <laughs> that, that was what I was drinking. Uh, uh, there it is. In the lead up to my wedding, uh, and each of my groomsmen, including next to the oh, signet yeah, no. bottle, um, each of my groomsmen, including Mitch, the guy that was uh, doing Mitch's Minute, we were drinking out of these ones. And, uh, and, and Cognac Abel, I have to say, was the first thing I was drinking as a, as a married man. Um, well, other than when we did, and I'm taking sips of this when we're signing the papers and everything. When we did uh, the end of our vows, we had this glass. It was like this, right? The big one and the little one. And it was completely filled with plantation pineapple. Well, thank you. Right? It's hanging like this, and in front of the, I'm honored. the 120 <laughs> guests, um, my wife, uh, you know, do you want the big one, baby, or the little one? She was like, I'm, I, what, is, what sort of question is that? I'm going big. And the, the way she said it, of like the, the, she was shocked that I would even consider that she would have the small glass, <laughs> made me decide that I was making the right decision. And she downed the big one, I had the little one, and... Uh, we, we, we sealed our wedding vows with uh, plantation pineapple and, uh, and, and I softened my nerves during the day with uh, Abel Cognac, which uh, I have to say thank you very much for that because your, your team sent me the cognac as a gift. Um, well, so it made my wedding day very special indeed. Thank you. I'm very honored, by the um, way. Well, while we're talking about little moments, so I wanted to like, take the time to, 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 to thank you and also to let the people that do tune into the show realize like, how special a, a, a brand that's special to you can be, you know, in moments of your life of celebration and stuff like that. So I thought that was quite cool. Well, it's Thank you. You've always said that's because of why you do what you do, isn't it? So it was very cool. You know, I was just going to say this. You know, the, you, this is the exact story that that makes me get up in the morning, right? Because you know, some guys save lives, and we know we've been some heroes. And during the COVID and the uh, you know, hospitals and so on. And we make booze. We're trying to create these bits, yeah. moments that stays with you all your life. So that's what we're about. So thank you. I love it. That's why I get yeah, up was... every morning trying to make these delicious little moments we can share. It was a really special day. Um, so so um, I, have a, I have another question, which has always, it's always been in the back of my mind. Um, you make a lot of different expressions and, and each of them has a kind of it's almost like a signature flavor um not not a signature flavor but there's a there's a balance to each of them you know they're not they're not all over the place um and i wanted to know do, when you when you go into creating a new line have you have you already got a kind of an idea of of where you're going and what the demographic is or are you just taking something that you found that's special and and then working that to, to your you know, palette. you know, the way uh, I'm a very, very bad musician, you know, and I love music. I have a daughter who's trying to make a, um, you know, her life out of this. And it's like trying to write a song. You get it's a mood. It's a feeling. It's, it, you yeah. know, if it's something that's with a rhythm, not rhythm. And in the difference with writing a song, you know, you know, this is what's the same. The difference is that when you play, when you are working with rum or we're working with cognac, you are empowered by a whole, by centuries of know-how, yeah. you know? So let me explain. If you're thinking, I'm working with Barbados. So there's a whole heritage in Barbados that I try to humbly learn with my team. And I got an incredible team at West Indies Rum Distillery, right? And, uh, and they're great guys. And so Barbados is about adopting and learning a lot of techniques of rum. It's about balance, it's about elegance. So I want to be true to this. And then, yes, I'm glad you say this. There's a signature style, right? To yeah. me, I want rums that are very expressive, right? Like we're, we're saying something. You know, my, my grandfather who taught me uh, distilling and blending always yeah. said, you know, a great spirit, it's like a great book. What's your message? 
What are you telling me? So, you know, when when you you, you got the Jamaica in your hand, the, the, new, vin, the new vintage, actually, that's yeah. one of the latest baby. MMW, I got it right here as well. <laughs> you know, that's, that's by the way, it's just, we thought we're, it's just sold out in a few weeks. I was like, wow, you know, oh, we it's are- Oh, a 17-year-old. Yeah, this is this is incredible. It's a single expression from uh, from Clarendon, MMW, uh, Money Musk, uh, Weatherburn. So it's 16 years of tropical aging, one year of aging here in cognac and a cognac barrel. And, uh, you know, we're going back when I started doing plantation many, many years back, 20 some years ago, the vintages were at a higher proof and we're going back to this origin of making. Mm. So you got this new baby here. And, and you know how we like to be transparent. So if you look on the back label, you got all the information yeah, about I'm what seeing, we're doing. I'm, you know? I'm seeing you've got the ester count, you've got your volatile compounds broken down, and then the dosage is zero. So this is a dry style. This one is dry, you know, and as you know, I, I, I like to celebrate the different techniques. And in this one, I wanted that single mark expressed exactly like this, you know, because I thought it showed well, you know, and the idea again is to make delicious products. So, and also, uh, this is, you know, this is a, a high proof. It's 49, almost for 50%. Uh, Again, expressing this intensity of this special pot still mark from the you know, wonderful distillery at Clarendon. And as you know, I'm working with a team in Clarendon. There is a beautiful, beautiful team under the helm of uh, Neil Glasgow and uh, Marta Miller, two wonderful individuals. And, uh, you know, <laughs> like highest of Jamaican a style. Ester, like at 50 to 80 How much were they selling that Ray Nephew 17 year old for? for <laughs> oh, really? Is that is that why it's sold out in five minutes? There's only 120 or so in the UK. Is it completely sold out yet? No. It's, it's okay, well, happy it's days. sold to the distributors, to distributors. So you can buy it online if you get online right now. Yeah, so, Joe, like got flash. so from the comments, guys, Joe Wadsack, which I think you guys might know Joe. Yeah, Joe, um, yeah, Joe, Joe, Joe knows everybody. Yeah. Um, Joe Wadsack has done the same thing that I've done and said, my tie, my tie, my tie. I could try. I could try. I, um, so he said, my tie, my tie, my tie, which jumps to my mind because you hear Jamaican rum, 17 year old, you know, and it's high proof. Yeah, that's a high proof. It, it's very, very structured. Obviously, it's a hundred percent pot still, uh, you know, uh, from Clarendon. It's a, it's a museum oh. piece. It is sold out here at Maison Ferrand, but there's, I guess, a few bottles left. And uh, I'm very proud of this. You know, I got this collection of very old barrels and I just wanted to share this very, very special expression. Did you see so how long it stays on the palate? Island. You know, that's something that lingers. And that's the idea. <laughs> 15 uh, Curacao, 10 Orgiat. <laughs> oh my God, I have to do this now. Yeah. <laughs> I have to do this now. It tastes so good. It, I hope I get one. I hope I get it's, one um, drink as it's well. It's so, uh, it's got like, it's almost like the, the esters are so, so like there's, there's such a nice balance. It's dancing and it's kind of, it's got a mouth numbing spice, like almost like, like like cloves do to your to your face. Well, it's got butter yeah, in it. it's really I, I, nice. What I like about the most is that you've got that intense um, ester fruitiness to it. So all of the sort of mango, banana, -y, uh, pineapple -y type note, but with that unmistakable Jamaican bass line, that sub bass, dirty wub wub, as I love describing it as. The, dirty wub wub sub bass. Yeah, it's, 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 it's that, <laughs> it's the bass line that drives that drives all of the pine notes. Okay, the only orange I've got in the cabin is more Monin, yeah, which you know, I, I guess. About 10 of that. 15 of the Pierre Fron Dry Curso, got it. Of course, I've got yeah, the okay. Pierre Fron Dry oh, Curso. Wow. I keep forgetting where I am. I, 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 so I was at Tales of the Cocktail the first time you did the citrus uh, chat and you brought the aged sugar syrup. Oh, uh, yeah. <sighs> Honestly, I would spend so much money on that aged sugar syrup. Ah. It was so you know, good. Paul is trying to get me to sell it, but you know, oh, this is one of the so Master good. Blender's yeah, little secrets. It's yeah. so <laughs> good. Why don't you sell it? Why can't we get the eight sugar syrup? Um, yeah, so 15. Come on, give us the sugar. We like the sugar. The sugar's so good. Uh, 
And then we're doing 50 of this, now, right? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what you might need with that. It's a sadipon, as you say, but like maybe a bar spoon of agave syrup or something like that. Uh, I can put just a tiny bit of sugar syrup so it doesn't detract yeah, I mean, if you've got, if you've got from the flavours. Because the vegetable makes an agave syrup. Like a yeah, I, I've syrup got agave. With a, but maybe not even a full bar spoon. Like a, I think we just need a touch of that, a touch of additional sweetness. Like... Ah! <laughs> Going. There we go. That right. tiny touch. I think that's, I think that's going to be the best thing. All right. This is going to be so fun. So I don't have uh, like cobble ice, which I would normally serve a Mai Tai on. Um, but what's that? Yeah, I know. We're going to destroy this drink. <laughs> right. So let me just double check the balance. So were you expecting people to make Mai Tais with this? I know, I know you know the cocktail world very well and you work constantly with bartenders. So you must have, you, you must have had people ask you, can you do a 17 year old Jamaican high, high proof? Well, of course. And you know, uh, you know, I always, I think the bar world is wonderful because it's, it's about creativity and it's also the same thing. It's about tra sharing with people. And I'm so sorry with the COVID because that's kind of putting, yeah. you know, throwing stuff into, you know, bad situation with that. But I love what's happening behind the bar and I'm the guy building the instruments and you guys play the music, you know. So when you, I mean, you want to make a great drink, you need a great rum or you need a great cognac, you need something delicious. This one is 100% pot still. The, the original, you know, I had tasted the 17, 15 and the different, and Paul knows, you know, uh, rums. They were actually lighter than that in terms of intensity and proof. Yep. I hear the idea was to make this super you know, delicious, uh, intense, yes, balance. Remember what you say to me, a great drinks can be intense, but it's got to be balanced. So that's what we're doing. That's what we try to do with that. Alexandra, Nick, um, Nick um, as in LA, has actually asked the question, what is a shooter? Yeah, I was going to I was gonna um, relay that. It's a question I can answer, but, but not one of my skills here. Do you, do you want to take people through what the shooter is and, and the heritage of it? Uh, well, you know, uh, there's there's uh, many, many techniques, right, that are used into spirit making. And in the old days, the way it was done for rum was that, you know, the caramel that was used, and caramel was used in rum for many years, there was not an industrial caramel. So people would actually make their caramel and it has a little bit of residual sugar. And what people would do is actually, uh, you know, warm up the, uh, the the sugar and then alkalize this and then you know, with rum and then just barrel age it. And that's what it is. You just barrel. So to create like a syrup that's barrel aged. So it's oxygenated and it's fully integrated. So when uh, you say you know, cognac uh, does it, then in the old days, cognac did it actually with the sugar from the grapes, believe it or not, the, the grape must. Uh, and so, you know, and then, you know, so these are very old techniques that, that sometimes like a bitter in a drink, you know, yep. it's used in very small quantity, lower than 20 grams per liter, you know, traditionally, uh, cognac lower than 16 grams. And that's what it is. And the old master blenders who trained me and I was trained you know, 20 years trying doing different techniques had showed me how to actually make some of these. And we've been continuing to do so. It, you just have to be super patient. I mean, you could do it yourself. You just have to be patient and, and, and barrel age it. You, you like how do we COVID it? Yeah. Um, I got an idea. You make me you make me thirsty with that drink. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's decant it. That's probably. It's probably safer. Well. I just. Wonderful. It's you know. That's the kind of ice I like, by the way. Yeah. This is so I've got I got I've I've got a friend who has started a ice company in London, and he's like he's bought like. 15 Klein Bells and just he's making ice in central London and delivering it. It's super cool. Wow. So now I'm, I'm, uh, my plan is to find the, co the correct size ice cube for every glass That's and then incredible. create a, create a spreadsheet so that, so that, so that people don't have to do the thinking, thinking again, you know? Yeah. That's beautiful. That's the plan. That's beautiful piece of ice. Sante, Alexander. Well, cheers guys. I'm drinking it straight. Thinking about you. That's my new Mai Tai recipe, I think. See, that's got, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> I wish, I wish we could just, 
this flavor to you. So that you could I would love it. I would love it. I'm waiting. You guys come over. It's delicious. Yeah. Probably a little bit. I could take the orgeat back a little bit. Yeah, I mean, that's that's always the um, satipond element. That, um, yeah. And depends on the rum. Um, but it took a couple of sips before that orgeat yeah. became a bit too floral. But otherwise, that's yeah. that's spectacular. And also, you could always do this, and then you don't. That'll kill the orgeat. Yeah. Floral. Yeah, it's better with more rum. Yeah, well, it's, 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 that's spectacular. I'm sorry to, um, so I, again, so that's what we're here for. Seventeen-year-old rum. Yeah, you've you've put a lot of thought and a lot of effort into it. Um, are you expecting it to be sipped, or are, are you concerned if it goes into cocktails? It's not. You've got no problem how people drink it as long as they enjoy it. Is that right? But to me, it's exactly that. You know, we're making this so people have a better, little bits of better life, you know. So if you want to sip yeah. it, I'm sipping it right now and I'm enjoying. I made this baby with my team and, and I'm enjoying every sip of it. My only regret, we had 29 barrels and they're gone now. But otherwise, yeah. because I just love drinking it. And once this type of products, when they're gone, they're gone. But I'm enjoying and I'm actually jealous. I'd love to sip the drink that you're drinking. The idea is to make delicious things and to make a delicious co a cocktail. You guys know that better than anybody yeah. else. You cannot make a you know delicious cocktail with, with bad quality products. And that's, that's the same, by the way, with us. You cannot make a great cognac with bad grapes and you cannot make, you know, uh, with bad barrels. You need great ingredients. Yeah. But then, but then this is also not a function. 80 pounds is pretty reasonable. That's extremely reasonable. Or 50% yeah, at 17, 17 percent, 17 year old as well. So actually, now that we talk about this, can I can I taste this? Because I forget. All right, I, I I think that I put plantation rum and many other great things on uh, the label for the show. But there's a there's a big feeling in my heart that uh, cognac is like kind of largely underrated in the bar world. And I don't know whether it's because the higher expressions of cognac um, are, are kind of dis are more expensive and they kind of price themselves out of the range of a lot of bar young bartenders. So it's missing that. Um, but, you know, when I first started bartending 20 something years ago, you know, like a Hennessy XO was always on the back bar. The, the, you know, you had two or three, you had a VS, a VSOP and an XO of of uh, multiple different big cognac houses. And for me, I think maybe um, when the Asian market opened up with the limited amount that cognac can produce at such an older age, they went there where there's a higher NSV, you know. Um, do, do, do you think that there's a, a chance that uh, cognac will come full circle and be, you know, prominent on bars again in, in uh, the UK and the West? Well, that that's my hope question, so much. Uh, that's, I mean, I'm dreaming about it uh, for for many, many years. And as you know, I've I've made the 1840 original formula with Dave Wondrich. And yeah. this is a dream that he's sharing. The one that you're opening here, the 10 generation, is 46%, you know, alcohol, more, more concentrated. I'm going to have a little sip. I can't just watch you, you know, drinking. And, uh, you know, the idea, and it's, it's a dear, I mean, it's a dream for me that the bar world uh, start using more cognac and I think it's happening to tell you the truth. Yeah, and, I think it's about and, time You know, but I think the the idea if you look at cognacs in the 19th century a lot of the cognacs had uh, oh, uh, oh, 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 oh. Different... oh my god Okay So I've just been informed of this. Uh, let me see if I can get that no, no, so no. at the bottom of the bottle the 10 generations of of your cognac producers, is it Maitre D's? Is it Maitre D's? Maitre It's a Ferrand family member. Oh, Ferrand family members are actually in the roots. Yeah. You know, the profiles are in the roots. So, so from their family this is traits. such a good, like, that's a, an amazing detail to have. Won, that's um, so cool. It won a packaging award um, after we launched it. This is a lovely one. All right, so I'm going to taste this because. Because I, like I said, you know, the Abel was at our uh, wedding. When I went to buy it for our third anniversary, it was uh, it was out of stock. We don't do it anymore. So, so is that? Are you discontinuing some of the older uh, some of the older cognacs in the range, or are you are you planning something big that you're gonna like surprise the world? <laughs> Where you know the Abel is such an old cognac. You know, it's 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 very 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 old. 
And that's yeah. as, as basically as, as much as you can age a cognac, decades and decades. And so we have some barrels of this, but we treasure every bottle. So we stop and go, you know, we sell for a while and then we stop and then we sell again. So you're going to see all the expression, vintage expressions. The one you're tasting here is an expression that is old from Grand Champagne. And I want you to know that, uh, you know, 20% of this cognac has been aged in a barrel of Sauterne, actually Sauterne wine. Mm. It's an old tradition of cognac where cognac guys used to use the wine barrels from the nearby vineyards. So as you know, cognac is my first love. I, I started I started being taught about cognac. I was 23 years old and I'm now 54. So it's been uh, 31 years. And, you know, I've learned so much by very old master blenders, two guys in, and, you know, uh, the 10th generation was in honor of the last lady that was a pharaoh in, in, you know, in the estate. And when she passed away, you know, I, I she inspired me this very specific blend. This is and, uh, you know, it's got this, this, this <coughs> intensity. And I tried to me, it's, it's intensity a- and elegance. That's why, you know, flower notes and so on. And you can do a lot of things with this. You can sip, it's delicious. You can have it on ice, it's delicious. And because it's 46% alcohol, it's is... not your regular 40%, it won't dilute down. So that was the idea. Also is to have a lot of fruit, a lot of flavor, a lot of intensity. But you know, every spirit I make, you know, Dean, you always see, I love, I want to feel something. I want to show yeah. you, like, I want our expression. To me, that's very important. So when we're saying cognac, we're not tiptoeing the line. We're really showing you the deep flavors of cognac, and that's what we wanted to do here, but with the floral notes as well, because of that specific aging we just talked about. Yeah, it's very cool. I like this. This is delicious. It's really cool. So I was expecting a lot more questions from people. Um, so Mitch has asked, so in a nutshell, it's cask aged caramel from molasses. Is that correct? But that's not correct. No, no Mitch, it's, it's, it's like it's, sugar so, syrup. With... So, 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 so effectively, <laughs> alkalized sugar syrup has been aged in a barrel. So you alkalize it so you don't get secondary fermentation in the barrel. But um, what you do is you, you make, you use different alcohol sources depending on where it's ultimately going to be used. So we would age Jamaican rum, Barbados rum, <laughs> Trinidadian rum, for example. And then, then what you've got is something that's very synergistic with the rum that you're about to blend it into. Because of course, when you're building um, complex structures in the blend, what you're ultimately looking for is harmony. And the closer you can bring everything together <laughs> prior to putting them into the same place, and the longer you can leave them together, then the greater harmony. Although, of course, I now have to look at Alexandra and say, Alexandra, is that correct? Yeah, actually, Paul is, as you know, Paul is very knowledgeable about rum. And I'm going to compliment what you said, Paul, that's going to make Mitch be right, actually, in some ways, yeah. is that I actually I have an old documents that I found recently where people used to make their caramel and, and their what they called the burnt sugar, you know, that was the, the raw material for this from uh, some people who are using molasses as well, by the way, you know, so either to make a richer, because as you know, caramel, uh, you know, the molasses had like rich, intense notes. So what you say, Paul, is totally correct, but it's also was made in the old days. Also, some mm. people made it with molasses as well. Very difficult to do with molasses, by the way, because, you know, molasses is so rich with ingredients and stuff. You need to decant it for a long, long time. So you're but both right. Would, would, would like if historically molasses, though, would have been slightly different, wouldn't the, the process of making uh, sugar is getting more and more efficient, no? Right. So there's, yeah. there'd be less leftover residual sugars think, in today's molasses. And, and you still see that, depending on where you go in the Caribbean, um, depending on the efficiencies within the sugar production, you can vary the flavors the taste change. The yeah. is vast. If, if you go to River Antoine, for example, the, um, when they are still um, boiling their sugarcane juice in big open vats with open with um, so so big sort of cauldrons with open fires, um, it's obviously not as, as efficient a system as um, uh, Barbados, for example, which is not as efficient as a lot of other islands in the Caribbean. Yeah. that very much industrialised their process. So I I'm I'm conscious that we've been keeping poor Alexander for almost 45 minutes now, um, and I wanted to ask about this one because I hadn't seen this before. Um, so have you have you got this one? Yeah, 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 I got this one right here, the Jamaica Special Dry. This was something I wanted to do. You know, when we do the blends, yeah. as opposed, remember we just had the vintage, right? 
and with the blends, what we wanted to do here was was a Jamaican that would be a blend of different pot still rums. All the plantation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jamaican rums are pot still rum, except one special edition that was from the old uh, silent Cullen of Grand Pond that was very limited edition. But this one is 100% pot still rum. It's a blend. So as opposed to the one that you had, the 2003 that we just discussed, which is, you know, now discontinued, this is a blend that, that, that we keep on producing. And uh, that's a blend of different marks. Actually, all the marks are on the bottle, again, with our transparency, as you can see in the back. Yeah, it's and amazing. That's, that's, that's a typical Jamaican blend with a, a lot of that Jamaican fruit. ripe fruit. <laughs> And you can have that over and over again. And, you know, um, I just spoke to Dave Andrich last week and he was Let's telling you the week before, was saying, right you know, I love to sip it. I love to mix it. I, I was such a compliment from him because, you know, it's in French, we say insubmersible, insubmersible. You know, when you got that, I wanted that rum that would shine through any drink that you do. And the Jamaican rum will do that for you. You know, you got that intensity, yeah. but I didn't want to have that intensity that knocks you on the head. I wanted like the intensity, the fruit, the nice, ripe, exotic flavors without being hit in the face, you yeah. know, and that's what I wanted. Probably the, 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 the type of, uh, you know, Jamaican rum you would have drunk, you know, like in the late uh, 19th uh, century, you know, like, so very balanced, quite intense. And that's what I wanted no, to do. It's it's so fruity. Yes. Intense I get it. It's like, um, for some reason, I'm getting like the old uh, Angostura 1919. When Angostura 1919 first came out, that it had so heavy vanilla, wasn't it? It, it had a, like a hit, like a hint of that. It's 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 more of a passion fruity flavor that I'm getting. Mm -hmm. Or maybe yeah. I'm just maybe I'm just like. Maybe my no, palate no, was too great. Right. Right. You got, you got, you know what? Both, both, both things are true, by the way. Yeah. Because that was what, 15 years ago? Yeah. The rums change and we change. Mm. So, and, and both of those things like intersect at different points. Because now I go back to, to, some, to the Angostura 1919 and it's just sweet. But the rum doesn't, has changed beyond all measure. Mm. So, the ownership okay. of the rum, like, <laughs> the rum has changed. Well, that, that's not criticism of Angostura at all. Yeah. Right? It's, it, and, and you'll find that, that our rums will evolve year in year out because um because all sorts of materials change and um alexandra as an artist decides to evolve the rums that he's trying to do in a certain direction based on the yeah. material to get the best out of the barrels to get the best out of the material and stuff. so can i ask uh alexander you your 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 cognac production knowledge goes all the way to to you know pruning the vines as we discovered earlier on yeah. So you know wines inside and out. And, and from my understanding, um, it's one thing, uh, you know, a, a, a American oak, uh, Quercus Alba, uh, American standard barrel production where they're, yes, it's virgin oak, they're charred it and they're putting whiskey in it. But uh, it's my understanding that if you're going to put brand new oak with wine, the, the, the staves need to be air dried for a period of time, like the quality control in, yeah, in, in, in wood, for wine is higher. Do do you like yeah, knowing this, <laughs> right? Do you? I I love this, by the way. Right? Thank you. This is so good. Um. Uh. Do you ever like? Do you ever just want to 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 bring those wine making skills in as much as possible? Um, well, actually, you know, uh, Dean, we do. And, and actually other producers in Cognac do too. The wine, you, you hit on a very important point. The barrels, the barrels that we use, the wood is air dried for at least three years outside, you know, and also the rain washes all the harsh tannins. That's so that's exactly. what you have. Yeah. And yeah, the so, tannins, the stringency. And so, course, are... I mean, the, the ground around where they put the pallets is, is dark brown with all the tannins. And that's what you want. So, so it sits out there, rain and shine. Yeah. And allows so it's not it's not kiln dried in, in a couple of days. It's no, no, no. you know. It, no, 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 no. no. And it, it takes at least for for ferrand barrels and so on. Takes at least three to four years of being outside by the you know washed by the rain. And as Paul yeah. says, the harsh tannins just drip down from these staves that are raw staves. They haven't been you know cut into the proper shape yet. And so all this tannin that goes on the ground. 
Mm. And then so you get only the good stuff that stays there. It is matured outside before it's used. And that's 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 a lot of cognac producers still do that, actually, my, my friends here from cognac. But cognac takes it to the next level where you can't just mill it straight out of the wood. I know, you've got to smash it the right way. I know. <laughs> It's, the, the, it's so funny because I, I, um, I try my best not to get too geeky on the show because the idea is I want to have some longevity uh, for these kind of conversations so we can come back to, to, to uh -huh. conversations about splitting wood and, and, uh, and, and you know, marketing as well because I'm a massive fan of brands and uh, I don't think people should be ashamed of being a fan of good marketing, you know, so um, I kind of try to get that in on, on the show as much as possible. But... Um, do you see a lot of uh, crossover, like people using multiple of your products into into one cocktail, for example, as an homage to you when you come into their venue? Because I would be <laughs> mixing this with like... If only that was in more bars. Uh, where I, is I, it? I genuinely think, if, 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 I, if someone asked me, I've been doing this for 23 years now, and if someone asked me one product that isn't in bars, that should be... Pinot de Chouan. Yeah, exactly. Not, not, not even just kind of sell our branded Pinot de Chouan, but Pinot de Chouan as a category. Because yeah. If you ask me the perfect aperitif that is at once like wonderfully fruity. Also can can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and then just dries off and it at least gets the magnetic juices flowing and gets your palate really excited for what's going to come next. Plus, you can sit and session a bottle of that in a scary short amount of time, although I'm pretty good at doing that. It's, anyway. scary, it's, scary, it's scary how good it tastes. Um, but do you see that? Do you see people using multiples of your, considering like not many people produce a gin, uh, rums, m many different rums, uh, many different cognacs, and also mezcal. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting. I, I, I don't know if I can tell you about this. That is, that is, that is, that is not fair. This is. <laughs> this. So do you want to know what's not fair? So you you know the boys from Siete Mysterios, right? Of course, of so course. I traveled I, I, all was over Oaxaca, fun. Oaxaca with them, going to lots of different small bodegas and meeting the guys and and trying desperately not to get dragged into the the coop with the fighting chicken, despite the fact that I was able to identify <laughs> that's a fighting chicken, you know. <laughs> um, and and I suggested to them I wanted desperately to go and do a a, a porky pineapple pachuga. Right, because before the pineapple was a symbol of hospitality, the boar's head was the symbol. That's right. So pork, boar's head, pineapple, and I, I'm a, you, you know this, I'm a massive fan of pineapples. Um, so I was doing like seminars at Tales of the Cocktails on the pineapple, like years and years and years ago, and and uh, I wanted to make a porky pineapple pachuga, and they were like, yeah, 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 it's cool, it's cool, we can do that, and then you beat me to it. <laughs> um, well, you didn't put pork in it. Which, thank you for that, because then I still get to go back and make my porky pineapple pachuga at some stage. But uh, this is delicious as well. So you, I guess you weren't expecting me to pull this out, right? No, no, that was a, that was a friendship. You know, uh, you know some, when I go see my friends and I visit other distillers, they always like, Alexander, we're waiting for you. We're going to make a product together. And yes. usually we end up drinking most of it. And I guess yeah. this one made it to market. My son, Charles, was there as well. And... You know, we peeled pineapples. We bought, I actually uh, smuggled some different botanicals from France, you know, and, and they, you know, we just play around. It's like musician having a, having a, you know, a, a gig together. It's, it's just so cool. That, that was not supposed to make it to market, by well, the way. Well, you know, it's, uh, to, to be fair, I think I'm the only person in Europe that has it. There was, less than there was, there was a yeah. small, a small amount went to Canada, 290, and because... Because I had suggested the same exact type of thing, making guest pachugas um, to the to, to the Siete Mysterious guys, um, they sent me one uh, uh, and said, "We're going to do one with you at some stage, Dean. You know, when, when are you available?" And I still haven't haven't figured that out. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, but I don't pretend to be this? a good pachuga maker. But I was I was I was advised by incredible guys, and we were having loads of fun doing this. And by the way. The little stills they're using are similar stills that I used when I trained. You know, there was a little copper still where you use flour to seal the head yep. between every uh, flour, every right? distillate. And it was wonderful because my son at the time was an, a 17 or 18. And, you know, he's learning. He's learning distilling. And so it was wonderful, you know. And yep. we distilled that. We went through the whole run. We spent, you know, time was going slow. And, 
And uh, did, did you, I, didn't, did, I didn't even know it went to market, by the way, but I guess it oh. did. Some guy showed me some bottles, but... I... <laughs> Have you got some bottles? Well, we, yeah, uh, I, we... I got, they sent me one bottle, by the way. Okay, um, all right. We did, um, did you taste the, uh, the collaboration with the Ocho Tequila? No. Right, so... You did so, an Ocho uh, and, collab? And so, 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 so Carlos Camarenas and uh, Tom Estes and, and uh, the whole family are obviously very dear to our heart. And as on a child on that trip that took them to to, uh, to Mexico, um, worked on a collaboration with with Ocho, and so we launched a year and a half ago or so, um, a, an exploration of how we mix tequila and rum together. And so we launched a Guyanese rum, which which uniquely works with um, old tequila barrels because yep. because it's got very low ester content but very high higher alcohol, lots of cocoa and chocolate and lots of um, Ethyl lactate. So, so one of one of the few, without getting too technical, one of the few um, esters you find in tequila and rum in mm -hmm. significant quantities is ethyl lactate. Okay. Um, it's almost the only. And so, so, so we took a Guyanese rum that has that that ester, tequila that has that ester too, and and then married them. So we did an old Guyanese rum with with Ocho, and Ocho have just launched to market a um, a series of um, tequila barrels. So, so aged in um, the Pierre Franc Cognac, um, aged in the, um, wow. the uh, uh, Barbados and Jamaica. Is that right, Alessandro? Do you, do you recall? Yeah, 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 yeah. They did, and they also made me. Uh, they also asked me to make a blend for them. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. I'll give you a blend. That's right. So you, get, so, 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 you know that Otra was about single estate, single vintages. Yeah. But they didn't normally do blends, and so they set Alexander the challenge. They said, "Here are the base components." Go on then, make something that's greater than the sum of its parts. So they effectively do what he does. <laughs> um, so, that. so everyone puts you to work. When you go to meet them just for a nice casual lunch or something, you're put to work every single time. Is that right? And they should. And they should. <laughs> Why not? I do the same with them. <laughs> nice. Yeah. It's, 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 it's two-way learning, isn't it? I actually must have some of the bottles right here. Where did I do? What did I do with them? I have the whole because they sent me a whole. Well, they, I love these guys. You know Thomas. Oh yeah, uh, they're Jesse, amazing. They're um, wonderful guys. Carlos Camarena, you know from Altenas Distillery. They're incredible guys. And so it's first and fall small. Yeah, it's about skills, but it's about friendship. It's guys. a small family. The you you'd be interested to know. You you had a table at my wedding, so there was a plantation table. Right, but there was also um, an Ocho table. Of course. How wonderful. So, they're great know, guys. They're, we they're, love these they're, people. They're, there weren't that many tables, but, uh, but there was both of those. Thank you. That's great. Yeah, I, I have their bottles somewhere. Yeah, there's one right here. The reason for those guys is that shared business. Like, yeah. They, they are also a little family. See, this is, this is the coded bottles that I received to do my blends. I don't know if you see it on the camera. Uh, we can see it. Yeah, thank you. So that that's the one in a, you know in a cognac barrel, for example, as you can see. And then you know they send me a lot of coated bottle like this, and and we worked with the with the guys and made them a, a little blend. That was fun. All right, so I'm gonna put up one last drink for myself and Paul. I'm so sorry that you can't be here yourself, Alexander, but uh, hopefully you know. If you're ever anywhere near Dulwich, which, <laughs> which I soon, as soon as flight, you know, are coming, I'm coming to see you guys because I'm watching you making drinks like that. I think the other way around, like, what I want to do is, is take one of those ludicrous expensive cameras you've got. Yeah. <laughs> take you over to cognac, not, not on a grand trip, but, but to get under the uh, skin of cognac. Because I, I want to take you to Allery or some of the other wonderful culineries we work with. And, um, and take you through the process of of how they split trees. Yeah. Them and well, go I, right I've been barrel making, and then and take the process from the from the pruning the vines in the start of in, in the depths of winter, and see that right through to flourishing and then bottling. So I've been to cognac a few times on my own dime to learn about cognac, and uh, you know what? The first the first time I didn't I did the Disneyland tour of everything. And it was a little bit like underwhelming. The second time uh, we got hooked up and we stayed, me and one other person in Chateau Bagnolet for a couple of nights. And we had a private chef and, and, and it, was, it was the first time I learned, right? I can drink a lot of alcohol and so can the guy I was with. 
and we drank all day with the uh, the tour guides from uh, from Hennessy, and they were they were amazing. You know, we tried a cognac from from 1900 that was still in the cask, and I got video, <laughs> and it was 2010, so it was 110 years. You know, and um and uh, they left us a bottle of Hennessy Richard. You know, uh, is that how it's pronounced? Yeah, that's right. yeah, and they it, said, it is. This is it for is. you guys, right? And the whole night we were smoking cigars and, dr and making them cocktails and having a great time. And the guys seemed to genuinely be enjoying it. They left a bottle of Hennessy Richard. That's for you guys. We started drinking it. And then towards the end of the night, uh, my, my friend said, we have to finish this. Otherwise, it's disrespectful. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man, I don't know. <laughs> and No, no. <laughs> But we drank it, right? And I, I left when there was a little bit left. And, and he, he made sure it was finished. Mm -hmm. And he's a man of his word. Now, the next morning, wake up. He was meant to be driving. There was no driving, right? He was in a terrible state. And I'm, I weigh a good 35, 40 kilos more than he does. So the amount of booze he drank was, was like, I was like, right, you're not driving today. I'll drive. We gave, myself, we gave ourselves plenty of time. To, to make sure that we had, you know, uh, the alcohol out of our system, I think. And then I started, I drove. But as I drove away, I thought to myself, oh, those guys are probably think we're like, you know, problem, al uh, problem drinkers, you know, drinking as much as we did. And then it occurred to me, if I was the person who'd given the bottle and, and I was the person who had hosted, I would assume that, that these two young bartenders had decanted the bottle and stolen it and yeah. just taken it, you know? And I was and like, oh, and I said no. it to, to my friend. And that was when we were like, oh, so, so now, like, rather than thinking, oh, they'll think we're super cool because we drank the whole bottle. We think like we've got to think more grown up. <laughs> no, um, no, and that, I, think, that I think you're right with the first story. <laughs> What's that? I think you're right with the first story. They probably thought you enjoyed the cognac and enjoyed the night as you should. Well, I sure I hope that's the that's the case because we had a brilliant night. That's what I would have thought. That's amazing. So that, that's really good, awesome. huh? Oh, hey, outside of the rum world, so outside outside of a daiquiri, pisco sour is probably my favorite drink. And the floral aspects you get from this, oh. it's so pisco, isn't it? This, yeah, I just I'm amazed at how, like, how big it's become. Like. I think I could have balanced that a little bit better, probably a little less sugar for the second run. Touch that sugar, but this is so dry that I, I thought it needed a little extra. But um, that's because, so I basically made a riff on a, a New York sour, but I used your, your Jamaican rum and then yeah. put like, uh, made a sour with that and then put a little hint of the Pinot Chirot on the top, a float. Cool. And it's delicious. It's really tasty. But uh, for those people who don't know what Pinot de Chirot is, by the way, because we were talking about it earlier, so, so it's like press grape juice. Uh, fortified it, it, with, with the coffee. sound, it might be better if Alexander explains it. Oh, yeah, perfect. Well, Does that make uh, sense? Cause, uh, uh, no, because yeah. people, could you explain for the people that don't know what this what is actually Pinot? is? But Pinot de Chirot is the bottle that if I stop making it, my father's going to kill me. This is what it is. It's uh, He loves it. This is uh, really the grapes when they're just being crushed in cognac. There's two ways to produce it, by the way. Either you start a fermentation or either you don't start the fermentation. There's two schools. This one started, uh, slightly started. And then as fermentation just kicks in, you just add the cognac from the previous year, right? So you got this grape must, this, you just crush the grapes. And as the grapes have been crushed and it's very aromatic and you got this thing, it's just a little bit of a fermentation that starts. You pour fresh cognac from the year before, so you kill the yeast. Yep. So all the, the you, you got some sweetness on your palate that just comes from the grapes themselves. There's nothing that's added to them. And then and then it's 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 just a little bit of cognac, so it's 17 to 18 percent alcohol, depending on your batch. Yeah. So it's basically, I mean, port is made somewhat the same way, not really, Gary, but yeah. somewhat. It's it's like it's like a it's like a sherry when they, when they add. Uh, 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 Oloroso sherry, they're adding, uh, um, they're adding brandy to it to stop the fermentation and they leave it yeah. oxidized for a long time, right? That's what it is. And by law, Pinot de Charente has to be aged a minimum of 18 months. And that's an important process because some of the elements evaporate out and you get that nuttiness and it's an oxidative, uh, uh, you know, aging. So you got that some of these uh, very delicious elements. And I love Pinot de Charente. And by the way, 
Everybody, I want everybody to know that actually Pinot de Rochon bottles age. So if you like it, you can forget a few bottles in your oh. cellar and then come back to them 15 or 20 years ago later. And it's like, it's a reasonable price. It's on Master of Malt or something like that, isn't it? We sell that to bars in the region of... Oh, don't say, don't say, don't say. Okay. You can't say how much you sell things at a trade price on no, the no, show. No, I meant, I meant, sorry. <laughs> it's like, it's now a new rule. No talking about like trade prices or discounts or actual prices, like rough estimates of a price at, to, to someone that's just ordering it online makes this sense. Is why I'm one of the world's worst brand ambassadors. Because, 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 you know, like I used to talk about how much, I used to be a global brand ambassador. I used to talk about how much a bottle was. And then I went into bars in Paris and the only person, the only people they could buy the bottles from were charging 10, 12, 13 euro more than the Carrefour was charging. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I like I started to learn about just don't mention, don't mention the prices, <laughs> discounts, trade. Just keep it about this one. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I started it. I know. I'm my, my bad. But look, Alexander, um, I'd like to say thank you so much for, for giving thank so you much guys. of your time. Um, I'm going to cut to the world's most random Mitch's minute. And on behalf of all the people that are commenting and watching online, um, thank you. Thank you so much for, for listening to us, answering all the questions. Thank you. And, um, thank you. I'm going to cut to an to a off piece. And that'll give you a chance to hang up with a bit of grace. And uh, I hope that we get to, to do this again, in, whether I have a new studio or something, or we meet up somewhere else in the world. Um, it'd be an honor to, to sit down and have a long chat with you um, uh, where other people aren't watching, you know, so I can ask lots of lots of geeky questions. I would love to. And thanks for everybody to been uh, watching. Thank you to you, Dean. Thanks, Paul. Much love. Thank you. Take care. Right. And now care. everyone else. Bye bye. We're going to cut to Mitch's minute and say goodbye to Alexander. Um, I don't know what Mitch says in this because I didn't send him a question. I kind of told him I'm, I'm nervous getting prepped for Alexander Gabriel. And that's all, he, <laughs> that's all he knew. Right. So let's see what he says. Good morning, Dean. I set 11 alarms. I woke up on time. Couldn't see a question. Maybe I've been cancelled off the show. Anyway, I'm going to use my minute for a news bulletin. No, not really a news bulletin, but did you notice Kanye fell out of the presidential race? Not disappointed. Also interesting, um, this, the information coming from uh, the coronavirus task force is no longer being sent to the CDC. It's being sent to the White House, which is fucking insane because everybody knows they're incompetent. So America is probably doomed. Also, do you remember at your wedding you gave us all those nifty hip flasks? And as a smoker, I foolishly put mine in my back pocket, sat on it because I've got a fat ass, burst the cap on it, and it dripped cognac all down my bum before the wedding. Still got it. Still got my ass dent in it. And it's still... It smells like that delicious first crew cognac because I'd never ever refill it. Have a good morning, my bro. Cheers, Mitch. <laughs> All right. So, how was that? How good was that? Like, um, I've never been so nervous in my life, I think. I, I, like, because I didn't... Peppers in, or, yeah. just, or, or is it just having someone live in your space? Because cause I really feel like I've invaded because I've been watching this stuff on telly for a while. But you see, you can see how much goes on to make it happen, right? Well, like it looks, it, it's that looks seamless now, but it used to be a case of just sheer panic. But does it feel weird <laughs> to someone in what has been a private space um, up until now? It, fe it feels, it feels, it feels different. Um, I have to wear trousers and, and underwear and joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know what? Um, this is what I want to get to. Like my dream is to to have a like a situation where like I, I build the bar specifically to bartend from it, put it on a show, and then I'm like I bring in guests that might have different audiences that, yeah. that normally don't see bartenders that and they or they don't take the time to watch a bartender construct a drink properly and give yeah. a proper conversation. And it might be the Dean Callen show, but a guest might be Eric Lorenz. And then I'd be like, Eric and then get him up, right? And have like a couple of, I don't know, 
like C or D or E list celebrities, you know, and they've got a following of people that don't go to Eric's kind of bar, but when they watch him masterfully put a drink together, then then suddenly, yeah. you know, I want I want to get our version of hospitality to the people that have never have never had either the money or the time to invest in in going in and sitting patiently at the bar or as as I've found when I went to New York the first time I couldn't get in fucking anywhere the only place That's I could get in style. was Attaboy yeah. um and because they knew me <laughs> like <laughs> like but but had I not known anyone you know like you it's just not just another place. um sometimes our industry can be you know, cliquey and... It's going to be quite exclusive, and yeah. Exclusive. I mean, was there anything that you, in, in, like, in a private moment, you wanted to ask Alexandra, as soon as the lights came on, you just completely forgot? Oh, loads of stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, loads of stuff. <laughs> is, is, is there anything that like, you're like, Jesus Christ, like, is, is there anything I might be able to answer? Um, like, sitting there shooting shit. Like, to, 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 uh, you know, I wanted to keep it, like, about, you guys and the product, right? There's there's always going to be like, there's that reaction of people in the rum world. There's like a Facebook group that like, it's like, I wanted to be like, dude, do you ever actually go on and read that stuff? Yeah. You know, like, like, does it, does it, do you ever, does it affect you? Or, yeah. And, and also the, the, I know he travels as if he was a global brand ambassador sometimes. Yeah. So yeah. there, there was the questions of like, when when your 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 family name is on a product you know like do, do you still do the six week on tour or do you say to yourself like i'm 50 now yeah yeah. you know what i mean like well, and he, have to he does like there, there aren't enough hours in a day for what he does like I, I, i'm in constant amazement in that he is so good i'm a brand ambassador for the brand but, but ultimately Way down the pecking order because he's the brand ambassador. For the he's brand. the brand ambassador. <laughs> he's the goddamn brand. He's like, a, well, you know what? He's the walking, talking embodiment of what we're doing. It's like he's Alfred Contra. Alfred Contra, man. Hmm? Alfred Contra. Like that guy, He, you know, he wrote a book and he wasn't allowed to release it in France because his surname is, is a booze brand. So people would associate it with the booze brand. Well, it's, like, it's, it's really funny. So, so, so we're, we're doing a lot of work with Fiji right now. So, so that is that different to the Isle of Fiji? Yes, and that's new as well. Yeah, this is new. Oh, so, we so can I that. close on but, tasting uh, but, that? But, but, but Fiji, so, so the distillery in Fiji um, is owned by um, uh, uh, <laughs> Fiji, well, Fiji Rum Co. is owned by Coca Cola. Um, and the reason they own it is because they um, use it as a distribution chain for Fiji water. And so, and so, what? Yeah, and so, so that's just the reason it, it comes as part of the package. And, um, but so, so, um, Fiji Water are, are, are suing the Fijian government for the use of the word Fiji in tourism ads because, because the country of Fiji using Fiji as a destination of tourist ads is in breach of Fiji Water's ownership of Fiji. The country of Fiji should Fiji nationalize Fiji. 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 <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah. That's so bad. Yeah. That's what well, are they trying to take advantage of a country that doesn't have like the American kind of money to the, the muscle one, money? One of these things, like that. That's once, once we trademark, should. Once you have a trademark, you've got to defend it. No, but, 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 um, fuck but, but that. Fiji, I would love to get Adam to talk to you about the situation with Fiji because um, we, we spent so much of plantations exploration within the Caribbean. Although we have, we've done releases for the Union Islands and places like that. But Fiji is quite far afield, as you know. From it's got Canada. such a particular smell. So, so I ask you, before you taste that, no, sorry, <laughs> I like it, it's good time. <laughs> That's but, close. But, but as, as growing up as an Australian, you would have seen lots of Indian rums coming to Australia. I'm Irish. Come on. I practice my accent. <laughs> to, to be sure. But, um. like, <laughs> but, um, but yes, yeah, so you, so you know an awful lot of um, uh, yep. Fijian rum comes to Australia. And, and, it, and, and uh, I guess I'm not being controversial if I said it's usually of not of the highest quality. No. It's, it's not aged for a long time. It's not. It's not necessarily. But that's what people like. They like Bundy rum, seventy-five thousand liters vats, 100%. like two years. <laughs> so, but, but, but actually, you've got this wonderful archipelago of islands that um, that make these incredible rustic rums that actually quite are quite unique to place in terms of their taste profile because so so, so Fiji grows unlike most of the islands of the Caribbean actually grows most of its own sugar cane. Yeah. So they've got a terroir. Um, the, the unique aspects of their fermentation and distillation means that it's very low in esters, so unlike Jamaica, for example, but really high in 
cocoa chocolate oil yeah higher alcohols i can smell that and that's what you got and and suppose the closest analogy in the world of rum the closest comparison would be guyana yeah because guyana also uniquely has a very low ester a very high higher alcohols so, so but it's the, the is, quality of the sugar cane well, like, it's, it's unique aspects of the sugar cane and local terroir the yeast because guyana gets to harvest a year right yeah, it, it, it's, it's not necessarily They're just like about super sugar. sugar. It's more about the local terroir. So it's, it's the aspects of the yeast. It's about it's about the local um, uh, flavor profile and stuff. Um, and so, so what you've got is something that, that the, the the only real close um, comparison is Fiji is Guyana, like I said, but it's oily and cocoa. But and is this how and, dry and is this one? Rich and so it's just four. Pruning. So it's 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 got a little bit of sugar, but not much. Tiny amount. Like, All right. Cheers. And I think um, this um, is 50%. Um, and on, the, on that note, should we wrap the, the guys up? Yeah, we're going to wrap it up. I'm just going to say one thing. Um, Gabby, Gabby commented and said that, you know, uh, when she comes drinking in London, she's going to drop my name when she goes out drinking. Gabby, we will be going out drinking together when you come to London to go out drinking. Are you crazy? I'm going to take you out drinking. Don't be silly. Um, which probably means that you'll get into less places. <laughs> thank you very much, everybody. It's been a great show. Uh, thank you, for Paul, for coming and sitting through it. Um, I'm glad I put the aircon on because it's gotten warm, even though the aircon's on. Um, yeah, thanks for sitting through that. It, I'm super happy. I'm, I, this is my happiness now. This is my first live guest. And then Alexander Gabriel as well on the line. It's just what, what a happiness day. You ordered what?